everybody. Big Jim Country Boy here. Check out my new t-shirt. Displays my big giant hot dog I cooked over a campfire. Isn't that beautiful? I got a bunch of other shirts you can check out. Coffee mugs and sweatshirts, hoodies and everything. I'll leave a link down in the description to the uh, merch store. Hi everybody. Big Jim Country Boy here today. Uh, today we're going to make some kimchi. I'm going to show you how I do it nice and easy. I sort of kind of have a little bit of experience. I grew up on a farm when I was a kid where we grew Napa cabbage. I actually worked there at a young age. And then uh, we hauled it to Chinatown, New York City and delivered it to the shops and stuff in Chinatown. And there's a place on Long Island that I believe it was um, in a small community that used to uh, manufacture it for the jars for home use. And uh, we toured their plane a couple times. And uh, what this is, is, is Napa cabbage. And uh, we saw how they did it a few times. And you can do it and make it out of whatever you want. I've seen some YouTubers make it with uh, regular cabbage. So you can do however you like. We're going to put a bunch of different ingredients in this one today. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. No. You'll see people to make this with a half a head and whole and Put salt and stuff between every leaf and all that. I, I don't. I don't get involved in doing all that. I'm just breaking this down small so I can cut it up on the cutting board. And if you see a dark spot like this, it's okay. Just take that out. Discard it. Like so. And then. And you can take this, slice it thin or discard it, whatever you like. I believe I'm going to slice mine and put it back in here. Like I said, there's a few discolored leaves here where it's brown. There's probably nothing wrong with it. It's not like it's skewy and rotten or anything. But just to be on the good side here. We're going to take these out when we do it. Now, the way I do this is I cut right down through it like this and make pieces. Close to bite sized pieces. But a little larger because it does wilt in the process. And I'm just using this for a big vessel. It's a lid off of my big roaster, turkey roaster. And I'm just using that for a big container. I'm going to put all this in there and break these chunks loose. Like these. Break some chunks loose. And it's pretty simple the way I do it. It comes out fine. Perfectly. And like I said, I've seen it mixed. This is just a smaller version of the commercial way they do it to sell you to you. But we put a little bit more goodness in ours. We're not trying to make profit here at home. We're just making a good condiment.
here's the root part once this is fermented and wilted these are a nice addition Now here we have a head of bok choy. <clears throat> Some of these leaves are just yellow on the edges. They're probably fine, nothing wrong with them. But to me it doesn't look appetizing when it's in a jar. I just take the tips of them off. So now, I use this because I like to add the green to the jar, it looks nice. We're just going to slice this down through the leaves. And then we're going to scatter that over the top of the roasting pan. Napa. Now we'll cut these a little wider. Now this is going to go into the pan, spread out over the top evenly. It's all going to get mixed up. I'm spreading it evenly over the top so it mixes easier and faster. I'll do the same with this and slice it. We're also going to be adding some red radishes. Um, These need to be washed and soaked because we're going to use the tops too. going to put these in a bowl, cover them with clean filtered water. Give them a little wash, let them soak for a while. We'll get back to them later. Now, I would have bought carrots whole and preferred to slice them, but uh, with these food shortages, Walmart only had this, is all they had for carrots in the whole store, in the fresh version. And rather than slice this thin, the shredded version will probably work out just nice too. Maybe even better than what I was thinking. And then here we have a daikon radish. Now everything goes in. Take this top.
break this down. What I've liked to have gotten is small daikon radishes, baby daikon radishes, the size of those red ones with the tops on, and I would have used it. And then one of the ways I cut this down is make strips, almost like french fries if you will. And I'll put them in there. This one's very mild. It's not spicy at all. I've had some real hot ones over the years. You could peel it if you like. I'm not too concerned with it and I'm not too anxious to do that because all this produce has natural yeast on it like that white film in the core of an apple on the outside you can see and that's what's going to ferment this for us so if you're one that wants to wash all your vegetables too you should use filtered water if you live in the city or the town with chlorinated water you don't want to wash your vegetables with it if you're going to ferment them And now I'm going to slice the rest of it like this in rounds. You can do it however you like. You can dice it. It's a matter of what size pieces you would like to eat once it's fermented. Now we have some uh, green onions we're going to add. Now, these I just take the root off. Always take the roots off first. Incidentally, if you plant these, that they will grow. Now, some of this don't look so good, like this green one here. It's wilted, a little mushy. Walmart's quality products. We take them off. This stuff may have frozen a little bit in the back of my refrigerator, too. Now, I 
cut them off about here. And cut all this green stuff up. About inch, inch and a half pieces. Throw that in. These I simply split long ways. And then maybe in half once. If you want a nice look to your jar, you can take something whole like this and stick it on the outside of the jar. Or one of those small radishes we're gonna use just to make the jar look nicer from the outside. made this cutting board in one of my other videos if you want to check that out now these are whole root top all oh, they're going in that way See any brown leaves you don't like, just pick them off. You can see they had a little farm dirt on them, if you will. Still at the Walmart store because the water turned cloudy. Rinsing off all the minerals from the dirt. Now, the longer you ferment this, the less crispy and the uh, softer the vegetables are going to get. Just so you know. And the more strong, pungent flavor and odor you're going to get off of it. See how that water's all dirty, cloudy now? Can you see the dirt that settled in the bottom of the bowl? Now, I usually don't measure, but for today's purposes, we're going to try, okay? I bought my garlic already peeled, fresh. For this size amount, for this size amount in this container, I'm going to guess we need all of this. Now, I did steal a small handful out of that bag for a dish the other day. I added some garlic to something I was cooking.
Oh, I made Alfredo. That's what I made Alfredo sauce. So we're going to put all that garlic in there. Now, if you have or you access or you like fresh ginger, you can add that in there. But we're going to add is ground ginger. I'm going to try to open this and scoop it out with a teaspoon so you know how much I'm putting in. I kind of just guesstimate. This is a teaspoon scoop. So we're going to spread this on it. I think we're going to use two of them today. So two teaspoons of ground ginger. Maybe a quarter cup of fresh ginger if you had it. It would probably be about the same, I would think. Slice it thin, paper thin, as thin as you can if you use fresh. And now we have some crushed red pepper. And we'll be measuring these in tablespoons. And again, we're going to eyeball it. You like stuff really spicy, put more. If not, use less. But I think you need to add some. This is our second tablespoon of crushed red pepper. And I think we're going to go with three. You can always add more in after it's fermented and let it sit a couple more days. It'll give you some more heat. We're going with three tablespoons. Because as it ferments, it does get a little hotter. Now, we need to add salt. You can use a good salt. Whatever you do, don't use that white salt that says it's got iodine in it. Make sure it's non-iodized. You should use a good quality like this ground pink Himalayan I have. Now, this is part of the process. And there's no reason to limit salt in your diet anyway. That's a myth. The more you restrict your diet of salt, the more medical problems you're going to have. That's how your body moves all its elements and minerals and vitamins around the body. And that's how your digestive system works. You need sodium. For instance, you can't digest potassium without sodium. That's how it works. The sodium links to the potassium molecule in the water in your body, and that's how it gets rid of it through dialysis and urination. And that's how it gets rid of excess sodium, too. So I think we're up to three tablespoons so far. This will be four. Five. I'm going to go with six tablespoons. One thing this does is keeps out the wrong bacteria. You ever made pickles, you know about the salt. A lot, you put a lot in, but you don't get it every bite a lot of salt. Now this is going to get mixed very well. Okay. And the best tool for the job is the one God gave you, your hands. Just make sure you're clean. The other thing the salt does is it um, helps draw some liquid out of this to help it pickle, just like when you make pickles. And we're going to ferment this naturally. We're not adding vinegar to this. It's going to make its own naturally. It's part of the process where the flavor comes from, too. Okay, now, next step, 
put another towel down just so things don't chatter and bang around on my glass top here. I have an empty pickle jar. Now, I also have the lid. I can put the lid on when it's done fermenting and I keep it in the refrigerator. But for now, these people that skip through videos, I'm going to save your life. Listen up. Do not put this in this jar and put this lid on tight. Put it in a warm environment because you're going to make yourself a glass grenade or an IED. It will build up pressure and explode and throw glass shards through the room. What we're going to do is we're going to put saran wrap over this or foil with a rubber band if you have one and poke a, one little vent hole in the top of it to let it relieve the pressure. This is going to ferment just like it would if it were wine or beer or anything else. You can't seal it in a sealed container while it's fermenting at room temperature. It will explode. You set this aside until the point it gets refrigerated. Okay. So now... I want to add some more color. I'm going to put a red bell pepper in here. It's not required. It's just going to add some color. I think I'm going to do just give it a rough slice. Larger pieces. Basically cutting it in the rings and cutting them into three sections. Now. What I'm going to do. Try not to make a mess. Is just grab big handfuls of this. Handfuls of this. And drop them in the jar. Just gonna fill the jar as we go. Now it's not mixed like evenly in the buck in the uh, roasting pan, but what I try to do is uh, do it as I go, mix it by hand. Now you'll see why I shoved my hand in the jar. See how I'm trying to plant that radish on the edge of the jar on the side so you can see it when it's full? Take your time. Make sure you dig down to the bottom. Your garlic, when you toss it with your hands, is going to sink to the bottom and maybe your onions. And Try to throw some of these red peppers down on the side. See how the texture changes on the bottom you get the harder pieces that are smaller with the onion and the garlic and stuff you want to make sure you get a little bit of all of that see how I'm digging in one spot in the pan and hitting the bottom some radishes plant a couple of these peppers down in the side kind of like a garnish so it looks better from the outside of the jar I'm 
I'm hoping this fits in two gallon jars. That's what I got. Two one gallon jars. Okay, shove some of these pretty things down the side. If you saved your long onions, this is the point where you would shove them down along the side so you can see them on the side of the jar. Okay, now, the jar says it's full, correct? It's not full. We're not done. This is how you make kimchi. This is one of the important things. I use something like this. Okay. They say you're not supposed to use bamboo. You're supposed to use stainless steel. But let me tell you something. They've been making this stuff for tens of thousands of years in China. And Korea. And they didn't have stainless steel screws back then. Bang the camera. Sorry. So, you want to pack this down as hard as you can. Sometimes I'll take my fist like this and really pack it. You want to really crush down tight. See how far it went down? Went down about four inches or so. And then you continue filling. Chinese monks used to make this thousands of years ago. They put this in a crock, clay pot with a lid, and bury it down into the ground about two, three feet deep. All right. Now I've used over half a pan that I have here. So we're just going to pack this down some more. You want to keep it packed down. <clears throat> now, you don't have to do this next step. I do it to ensure it ferments in the vinegar, not alcohol. And what I do is I have apple cider vinegar, organic, with the mother in the bottom. See the mother in the bottom? And we shake that up back into the vinegar. And I just add like a tablespoonful. That's it. The other thing you can do, and I also do, is this is left from my last batch. See the liquid in there? And this is how I poke holes in the top of a mason jar so that this stays vented. So it doesn't ferment and build pressure. Now, I have this liquid left. 
I'll pour some of this liquid into the next batch. That helps ensure fermentation the way you want it to go. Now I'll save the rest of this batch to go in my next jar. Sometimes I'll use like that baking coating mix, like shake and bake. It comes with these little heavy duty bags, rubber band together. I just throw them in my butcher knife drawer because I use a storage bag when I make it. It's easier in a bigger bag. But what we're going to do is we're going to put that rubber band around there to hold that plastic on just to keep out flies or bugs or anything else like that. Ants that might come along or dust. And then we're just going to poke a hole right here. That's it. See? That's how far the knife went in. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see here. That's it. Just about half inch. Slit in that bag. Now, not hot, not cold. Room temperature is where you want to put this. If you have a wood-burning stove or a fireplace that you use daily, put this so it's going to about 80 degrees is perfect. And that's where I'm going to go set this. I'll be right back and we'll fill the second jar. The other thing you can add if you want it more spicier, I put in sometimes is this. Mexican hot sauce. And then um, this isn't real hot and it's not real vinegary. It's pretty good. I'll add some of that too. Maybe we'll put some in the second jar here. Now these jars are cleaned and sanitized too. They've gone through my dishwasher. Just to help ensure that things go the way we want them to with the fermentation. So I'll put some in the jar. We're going to add about a tablespoon of this hot sauce. Okay. Even if you only have enough to fill the jar halfway, make sure you pack it down. That's part of the procedure. Stomp it down just like you do sauerkraut. If you've ever made that. If you have a, a canning jar or a sauerkraut or what I don't know what it's called. It's a glass weight you put on top of it inside the jar. That would be a good idea too. But I don't ever use them. Use what you have. Don't go buy stuff. Use the money for something else. Save it for the can can seal for your preps. Now you could add a little bit of sugar to yours too, like a tablespoon, but it's not necessary. There's enough sugar in the red pepper and the onions and in the other produce. Now 
now we're going to add this one. I'm not going to use the vinegar. I just wanted to show you that that's, it can be done. What I'm going to add is the liquid from my other batch of kimchi, which automatically is sure that we got the right yeast and vinegar and whatnot in here, even though that this has been refrigerated. And that's kind of what it looks like when it's done. I dumped this little plate so you can see. It's going to have a strong scent to it if you've never eaten it. Um, like sauerkraut or dare I say spoiled cabbage. But um, it's not spoiled. It's good. It's supposed to be like that. You can see the red pepper flakes and stuff. Very good, very good for your digestive system, too. Very good to balance your digestive system and help you digest your food. I would call that at least a medium on a scale of spiciness. It's at least a medium, um, which is too spicy for some people with the amount of red pepper we put in without the hot sauce just to give you some kind of idea to gauge for your taste make sure you uh wash your hands good after doing this or if you got to stop to use the restroom or something wash your hands first and don't touch your face with your hands in that solution with that pepper and salt or you'll be sorry Now I put these out in the room by my wood stove. I have that corner shelf, as you can see in that other video, where I um, showed you how to light the wood stove easy. Or, um, <coughs> excuse me, or uh, the video where we're vacuum sealing five gallon buckets. That corner shelf there where the lantern's at, that's where I'm setting these out that way. So they're probably gonna be around 100 degrees most of the day now the longer you ferment this and the more pungent flavor you're going to get keep that in mind so don't be afraid to taste this in about four days and see how you like it but um i wouldn't go further than two weeks of uh fermenting it so Give her at least four days at room temperature. Um, between four and six, depending on the temperature in your room and stuff, is going to be about right for like a commercial product you would buy if you bought this at the supermarket in a jar. So until next time, Big Jim Country Boy over and out. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Try it with some rice or some Chinese food. Use it as you would like ketchup or salsa with your uh, stir fry or Chinese food. Oh, another quick tip. If you add this and soy sauce to ramen noodle, it tastes just like uh, Chinese food takeout. And again, please like the, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you didn't and click the bell for all notifications if you'd like to get notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again, Big Jim Country Boy out. Hey everybody, Big Jim Country Boy here. Check out my new t-shirt. Displays my big giant hot dog I cooked over a campfire. Isn't that beautiful? I got a bunch of other shirts you can check out. Coffee mugs and sweatshirts, hoodies, and everything. I'll leave a link down in the description to the uh, merch store. Until next time, Big Jim Country Boy, over and out.